Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today we want to take a look at topology optimization depending on the force definition. And this is a really big one because you can get caught up in a design which is optimal for the defined conditions, but the defined conditions may vary. And then you have a very suboptimal design, a bad design. So um, let's dive into it. So you have here a topology optimization setup, which is not optimal in case of design on design space i know but it does not really affect uh, the thing here um you have a boundary condition here fixed in all places you have a force here typical cantilever beam all right then you have a compliance based optimization 95 percent of the mass should be gone five percent retain and this is what you're getting like so yeah you see that there's hardly anything between those two sides. In the front, you could just see here a little bit of a rip here. But um, yeah, that's about it. And just imagine back to the design space here, this force was pointing exactly minus that direction. And now I just switched that. Um, and you see here the force Sorry about that. Well, you can see it here. Uh, minus Z direction is still with minus one, but the vector, I just put it 1% uh, to the side of Y. So it points a little, little tiny bit towards plus Y. And um, don't get confused on the placements of the force. This is acting on the whole edge same as with the other results so this is not a thing which um, does affect the optimization result but um, now let's just check wait a second this one what's that so that it plays a rip here so and it also looks a lot different from here so just to change back here So this was more like an X shape in the middle with a mass concentration on the middle. By the way, yeah, so this was the mesh. And here you have this concentrated on the upper. So pretty much of a design change based on this little, little variance of the load. And that's just the thing I want to make you aware of. When you define a topology optimization, it might very well be the case that it is optimal for the proposed loads. But you have to include the uncertainties of the loads in real life to be a little bit more robust. Because optima are quite strange things sometimes. It might be optimal for exactly those boundary conditions and exactly that ratios of the forces to each other and exactly those directions defined in the model. But going slightly off to the, to the side of it, just very a little bit of it, and you might get a way worse performance. You could test it. Um, I, I'm i not sure if I, I could do, I think also that in Inspire did not do it uh, until now, but a way of just um, testing your structure, if you have it designed, you can just calculate for the compliance and then change the loads and calculate the compliance again, for example, or look at the stresses, for example, because it could also be that maybe you have a stress constraint and the stress constraint was perfectly um, valid for the optimized design and the loads. And then one, two, three degree of load direction change. And then you get a huge stress concentration on one part of the model. And um, yeah, you would not get that in the optimization process. So be a little bit cautious when it comes to um, boundary conditions and load definitions. Always try to a little bit flex um, the forces and see what's the difference if you change the vector of the forces a little bit. Does it affect your design much or not? And uh, with that, that's all for today. I hope this video helped. Goodbye and see you next time.